Hi, hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys my 3.20 Righteous Fire Juggernaut build for the new Forbidden Sanctum League. So, um, before I get started, the reason why I'm making a Juggernaut guide uh, this go around, I'll also be making an Inquisitor, you can actually find in my FAQ. So if you guys are not familiar with my wiki, um, you can find the POB located right here that we're going to go into in just a second. For the comparison on the Juggernaut versus Inquisitor, you can always utilize this by searching and just clicking the question and it will pop up a shit ton of information for you. Furthermore, before we get started, uh, we've had some friendly people help make some extra resources. So Zul in my chat has also made a gem progression for people who need a little bit extra help. This is also in the POB, but you know, some people prefer this, so there you go. So to get started, we're gonna go ahead and just click this button here to copy the Juggernaut League starter. We are then going to open our path of building. Where did you go, POB? I just lost you. Here it is. And we're going to click new, import, import, boom. And there we have it. Now, before I get started, I want to just go ahead and give you some pros and cons of what Righteous Fire kind of does if you guys are unaware. So this is specifically talking about the Juggernaut version. Uh, and there's a lot of cons you can find on my website, so I'm not going to cover too much into this right now. I'm trying to sell you on the build here, right? Not, not scare you away. So you can expect around 100k plus armor with endurance charges, with make you, which makes you near immortal to physical damage, unless it's something like a, a maze vol slam or shaper slam, in which case you can just press the molten shell button and then laugh at them. Uh, one other thing to note is that Juggernaut actually will help mitigate elemental damage with a new node that came in last league called Unbreakable. I just forgot to add that here. 80% uh, all max res can go significantly higher if using uniques. Able to tank Awakener Meteor with Molten Shell. I've done it on both of my SSF characters flawlessly every single time. 25% plus max life regen per second. Easy play style. You never really have to feel like you're greeting for damage and then die to a boss attack because you're just throwing fire traps and keeping them in the fire uh, Righteous Fire Ring. Uh, expected to get around 3 to 4.5 million damage on this budget while being nearly immortal. If you want more damage, you can always go higher budget and or you can go ahead and decide to drop the shield, potentially go for a staff, go for double scepter. It's not something I personally want to do right now, but it's something I may explore in the near future. One last thing is this POB does not take into account the new curse changes. The curse changes will buff our single target and gives you potential something to aim towards such as anointing Whisper of Doom. Uh, whispers of doom in the near future but some of the cons are with my leveling guide we'll be muling so we start a templar only to level four though it's very simple uh damage is limited compared to other builds because we're dot uh colors can be a pain in the ass early game but uh my filter that i will be using as well with this will highlight a lot of four links and we'll be using a hybrid armor es gear to help alleviate the a, a massive abundance of blue gems uh, coloring your chest piece can be annoying when you get your six link, but utilizing betrayal, uh, it's not really that hard. Uh, and lots of gear crafting comes from the betrayal league mechanic. When I say crafting, I just mean literally using the betrayal uh, league mechanic to your advantage and picking up gear off the floor and clicking the unveil button. You don't really have to craft necessarily, but some players do consider that a form of crafting. Well, with that being said, let's get started on the POB. So, uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is show you guys some of the POB up to the 40 to 60. Then I'm going to show you some actual gameplay. Then we're going to come back to the POB. Then I'm going to show you some more gameplay. So let's get started. Um, with this character right here and this POB, we're going to take everything on here and slap it from 1 to 12. Now you can use the mouse scroll so you're, you can essentially easily scroll through this. And it's going to hold your hand from level 1 pretty much up to whenever you want to stop playing. So there's a lot of extra text uh, slapped into these POBs. So for example, level 1 to 12 tip level a Templar to level 4 to get these gems. If you click here, you can see the gems. This will essentially tell you how to level. If you don't like rolling magma, consider using Holy Flame Totem. All right, moving on a little bit more. Uh, if we go to the skill tree, you can kind of see what you're doing. Now, a lot of people might think that caster jug leveling is really difficult. It's really not. The biggest thing I can tell you, there's two cons. Number one, is int number two is the ability to read i know that's not rude i'm being very serious and let me explain when we go to our items here you'll notice i put a massive abundance on these scepters in form of text we'll be using a gem sorry a vendor recipe to level which gives us a guaranteed fixed amount of fire damage on our weapons that flat damage you get allows you to trivialize the game pretty much up until like 
maps, I would say, but with our build, it's only going to be to around 35, and then we go Righteous Fire. So you can find the recipes located right here. A lot of my items do have additional text on them for some easy help. One other thing to plug is if you go to your notes section, for players who do struggle with gearing and specifically auras, I have a breakdown of act by act on what auras you should be running, so you can always refer back to this. Anyway, moving back over, let's go ahead and drop this down to the 12 to 30, along with the 12 to 30, and on the tree 12 to 30. You can see this is when we actually start getting damage nodes. A lot of people ask why we take uh, spiritual aid for minion damage scaling. These nodes are actually extremely efficient. They, they're anywhere around 15.3% damage per point, maybe a little bit less, but they also give you 1% life regen, which just makes this very, very good, especially for Righteous Fire. One other thing to understand is when you take spiritual aid, what it does is when it says minions deal 10% increased damage, that means you deal 10% increased damage. Increased damage is essentially a global modifier, so it works for almost everything, which is really cool. All right, moving a little bit further, we're going to go ahead and skip into the Righteous Fire setup. So right over here, you can see at the level 30 to 40 session or section, we are already running Righteous Fire. You can tell because this is allocated and it says that we are essentially degening 444 life, uh, 45, but you can tell that we actually have a net regen of 96. Now we actually have a little bit more. The only thing I cannot do in this POV for you is change the level. So we are at 30 to 40. Let's put this at 40. You can see our life regen actually spiked up and that's because most of our life regen right now is coming from a combination of three things. Number one, the entiring ascendancy from Juggernaut. Number two, um, you actually have the Stone Golem, which you can find located right here, and the Vitality Aura, which is mandatory. So if you have all three of those set up, you should not be degening. If we go through my gear, I'll actually show you how weak the gear is here. We have a, a White Scepter pretty much picked up off the ground with crafted fire damage. We have a 13 life regen uh, shield. We have a 30 life regen bronze plate. Um, other than that, I mean, let's just keep on scrolling down. We have an 18.2 life regen uh, belt. And then going back to one more thing, I don't remember if I talked about it, in the 1 to 12 gear set when you're still trying to get in, remember to try to pick up a Lapice amulet that you can find literally on the floor or you can check the vendors. I don't remember exactly what level it starts. It's 5, 6, or 7, uh, but it's just to help you get that early intelligence. Now, with that being said, I'm actually going to go ahead and jump into a character that I made specifically for you guys. This character uh, was played from level one all the way to Katava. I actually have the video, I'm trying to upload it, but YouTube keeps copywriting it, so it's taking a little bit to upload. However, we're just gonna go ahead and jump right into a map. So this character is literally walking around with absolute garbage gear. I'm talking about real garbage. You will see that garbage live whenever that video goes live. Um, nothing here is very crazy, right? The gems are even, I think they're like 16 gems as well. They're not really very high level. Actually can't see, yeah, they're 16. All right, let's go ahead and jump into a quick map. Now, one of the one of the really nice things about Righteous Fire is you have the ability to take Call to Arms. It's entirely up to you whether or not you use this. I love using Call to Arms uh, specifically for just the instant Infernal Cry. So Righteous Fire's play style is real simple. You start your map, you turn on your RF, and you just start going. Anytime you come across a big pack, you can always use your Infernal Cry just like I did there. Uh, one other thing is we use Hextouch support for cursing. Even though uh, with the new changes, curses are much stronger being self-casted, you don't necessarily need this damage right away. So when you're still progressing, you're most likely going to be using Hextouch. Infernal Cry is also really good for these big packs. Check out the shrine. Watch this. A boom. It feels so good. Let's go ahead and just charge right over to the boss. Where are you, Mr. Boss? Later on, our flasks will also be automated uh, when you get to that later point in the POB, so you actually won't even have to press flasks. Strong boxes, you get to Infernal Cry as well. Where are you, boss? Here we go. Okay. One of the nice things about Jug is you get the ability to go face against most mechanics. If you don't like a boss, you can just let him hit your face, and you should pretty much be fine. Now, obviously, this depends on the type of boss. I just realized this is, like, one of the worst bosses to showcase because uh, of all the phases he has. Where did you go? Oh, here he is. No problem. No, no, no. Don't get consumed. That's okay. I mean, he may get consumed, but he doesn't do any damage. 
Mr. Wolfie, please. Okay. No, he teleported again. Okay. Normally, you would do a lot more damage at this phase, but, you know, I was sitting there doing nothing, so... All right, cool. So, anyway, that is done. Let's go ahead and jump back over to the POB now and show you one of the higher gear sets. Oh, that was scary. My Windows Explorer almost crashed there. That was very odd. Okay, so... I'm going to go ahead and put us to the 80 to 93 gear set. The reason for just jumping right to the 80 through 93 gear set is because... Uh, this is where I think most players are going to be, and this is where I wanted to put the emphasis. So, on the items here, if you look, there should be text on almost every single item giving you tips on what to do, how I do it, how to progress, why these stats are here, etc. One of the biggest things I can really tell you uh, that a lot of players miss are the following. On your boots, if you get a good pair of boots before your Legacy of Fury, uh, you want to use a few embers on them, uh, specifically the uh, Searing Exarch embers, to try to get Scorch Ground. This is a damage m -m -m multiplier. Furthermore, on your gloves, the exact same thing, but with uh, the green guy, Squidward, uh, because you can get exposure, which is also another source of multiplier. These are very, very big. Um, all right, moving on a little bit for, uh, further, you'll notice that this gear set doesn't have the craziest amount of damage. We're sitting at about 700k full DPS, which is not that much, but it is most definitely enough to get your um, your starting two watchstones. So that would be from your uh, Squidward and Searing Exarch. That'll get you your trial versions. So anyway, let me let me emphasize a little bit on this starting gear. We have a plus one fire weapon with burn damage that we crafted multi. You don't even need plus one fire. You could have a very high source of fire multi and craft increase. There's a lot of different types of weapons. Also, you can craft with minion damage essences because of spiritual aid. Colossal tower shield. The shield is actually straight up worse than most of the unique shields I would recommend. Highly recommend you go with Saffles, Dawnbreaker, or Rise. There's pros and cons to each one kind of in the description there. Your helmet here, I'm a big fan of uh, Betrayal Unveiling uh, to get your early plus gems. These act as pseudo five links without inflating the price at all, so it's very, very nice. Uh, there's a big emphasis on getting a big armor chess piece for Juggernaut. The reason on the big emphasis is because Juggernaut mitigates elemental damage through armor scaling, so you really want to try to get this. This is one spot that might be annoying on Jug for the off colors. This is why I've put some info here to help teach you how to off color it. Gloves are kind of the same as Helmet regarding plus the gems. However, you can also get, um, as we explained earlier, exposure here, which is very big. Moving on to your amulet. Um, Arsonist is typically your early game annoy. Uh, you can't really beat it in terms of value. Then over here, one big tip I want to offer to players is using Harvest's Reforge Chaos on accessories, specifically on your rings. It guarantees a Chaos Resistance roll, which can be greatly beneficial. All right. With that being said, let's jump into the later gear set in the 93 to 96. 93 to 96 is where players have been playing for quite a bit of time. You don't have your Awakened Gems yet, but your gear is starting to look much better. So here we have a multi-modded scepter. This will cost a minimum of two divines because multi-mod costs two divines. A maximum of, I can't really tell you, maybe two and a half divines. It shouldn't be because I get most of my quality fire gems, which is how we craft this through natural drops. Still using a Saffles frame, or I guess not still, but using a Saffles frame. If you want to go more offensive, remember you can always go Staff Variant, Dual Wield, or look for like a plus one fire spirit shield with fire damage. Here we actually have an Essence Crafted Helmet. Nothing too unreasonable. It's got burn damage with 30% um, 30 more elemental on it. That's via Essence of Horror. Glorious Plate, you can see, is a bit stronger now. Uh, we start to have the actual influences on it. So you can see I prioritize the Max Res and the Determination effect. Over here, you've got your Fire Multi and your Exposure. We've got our Legacy of Fury. We have a plus one Amulet with Fire and Chaos Res. You'll notice now that I have Anointed Charisma. Charisma... By the time you're at 93 to 96, the reasoning for Charisma, uh, remember, if you look at the notes, it will also talk about this. This is where we try to fit in our Skitterbot with our Malevolence. Um, and you can find that if you just go to the skills here. We are currently running Tempest Shield, Skitterbot, Malevolence, and Determination. That's in the bigger gear set. Then in the ultimate, ultimate last one, you can see here at 96 plus, 
I don't expect players to get here. I expect this to be over 40 divines for most players. Here, you are essentially achieving immortality while still maintaining over 4 million boss damage. Again, your numbers will be significantly higher if you decide to manually cast your curses and min-max to acquire your Whispers of Doom. In terms of min-maxing, you can essentially get a Helmet Enchant for Malevolence Effect, and you can get the new modifiers for Mana Reservation Efficiency on two jewels, and you can actually slap on your Whispers of Doom. There is also one really cool thing you'll notice, it achieves this DPS without using a Cluster Jewel. Cluster Jewels, I think, for Juggernaut come significantly later, past all of this level of gearing. So now I'm gonna go ahead and log into my level 100 character and show you my 100 character only has about 2.8 million damage because I'm pure SSF, have virtually no awakened gems, and just don't have access to a lot of these things that you would normally get in trade league. So let's just go jump right on the jug. throwing on Minotaur. All we really have here right now is boss uh, Enfeeble with uh, Turbo. There is one other thing I would like to note now. Two things. Um, there is Explode Righteous Fire, although I will not be going into Explode Righteous Fire as it is a different build. Um, what you see right here on the screen, these explosions are the Legacy of Fury. You can also swipe, but I think it's gone now, with the Nebula Legacy of Fury, which is like my personal favorite, uh, which is located right here. Again, this character has around 2.8 million boss damage, maybe 2.9 million, uh, and you'll notice it can quite literally walk through majority of the content. As I was telling you before about the automated flasks, uh, you can see how my flasks go off by themselves. That's because whenever I get hit, they will automatically build charges, and if you look through the POB, it will explain that part as well. What's also very nice is when you get to this point on the character a little bit earlier, you can decide on whether or not you want to keep unyielding or decide to go unstoppable. Another cool thing about the patch that's coming in is we're going to get a new life mastery, and the new life mastery is essentially going to state that monsters nearby us have 50% reduced life recovery. This is going to be very good whenever you're doing stuff like I'm about to. Well, I didn't I didn't Maven Witness this one, but whenever you have Maven Witness uh, and she does like, take this Vitality Boon, that normally is super annoying for damage over time builds because as a damage over time build, you like your straight up damage is damage over time and they're healing, right? So getting that new life mastery will help a lot. So I'm actually going to intentionally stop throwing fire traps just so you can see the survivability you are expected to have. In Trade League, this goes way, way higher. In fact, Minotaur is actually healing our HP, if you notice here, and that is because of the Unbreakable Ascendancy. Unbreakable makes it so as we are mitigating physical damage, we're actually converting it into damage or life regeneration. Minotaur actually ends up healing us along with many other bosses. I mean, the more rocks he makes, the more my life regen literally goes up. So if you guys are looking for tanky builds, this character doesn't have a Brass Dome, doesn't have, for example, a Saffle's Frame, and again, as I said, is an SSF with no Cluster Jewels. So you can expect very high levels of survivability with this build. That's also not including my Molten Shell that's on left click that has a permanent 10k bubble. You can utilize this Molten Shell on so many boss mechanics to trivialize their damage if you just take it off the automatic left click. Anyway... That's pretty much everything I have to offer for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox, except for Mondays, although I will, except for Sundays, but I'll be streaming this Sunday specifically. One more shout out to the website, pox.net, where you can pretty much find all the content regarding Righteous Fire. And if you have any questions about Righteous Fire Trickster, go ask Captain Lance because I'm not making a build on it. See you guys all tomorrow, and thanks for watching.